Every year, flu season rolls around, but this time, it feels different. More people are getting sick, hospitals are struggling to keep up, and the flu seems to be hitting harder than usual. If you've noticed it too, you're not alone. Experts are warning that this flu season is shaping up to be one of the worst in recent years. But why? Several factors are at play, from new virus strains that have evolved to lowered immunity levels in the population. While the flu virus is nothing new, this year has seemed to bring unique challenges that are making it harder to avoid. So what's really going on? And how can you protect yourself? Keep watching to explore why this year's flu season is more severe and discover practical steps to protect yourself from this potentially dangerous virus. As previously mentioned, the flu season this year has been particularly severe, with rates spiking to levels not seen in at least 15 years. For the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic began, flu infections and hospitalizations have outpaced those of COVID-19. This has left many people wondering why the flu is so much worse this year compared to recent seasons. The answer isn't straightforward, as several factors have come together to create what the CDC has classified as high-severity flu season across the United States. One of the most significant factors contributing to the severity of this flu season is the decline in flu vaccination rates. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, fewer people have been getting their annual flu shots. At the end of the 2023-2024 flu season, 9.2 million fewer doses of the flu vaccine were administered in pharmacies and doctor's offices compared to the average year before the pandemic. This decline in vaccination rates is concerning because vaccines are one of the most effective tools we have to prevent the spread of the flu and reduce the severity of illness in those who do get infected. Historically, flu vaccination rates for adults have hovered between 30% and 60%, which is well below the recommended 70% target. Before the pandemic, vaccination rates were slowly increasing by about 1-2% to each year, but that trend has reversed in recent years. The drop in vaccination rates is especially pronounced in high-risk groups. For example, flu vaccination rates among children have fallen from 59% in the 2019-20 season to just 46% in the 2024-25 season. Similarly, among adults aged 65 and older, the group most vulnerable to severe flu complications, vaccination rates have dropped from 52% in 2019-2020 to 43% in 2024 to 25 This decline means that a larger portion of the population is unprotected against the flu, which can lead to more infections, hospitalizations, and even deaths. Vaccination not only reduces the risk of getting the flu, but also lowers the likelihood of severe illness if someone does become infected. When fewer people are vaccinated, the virus can spread more easily, and the overall severity of the season increases. Another factor contributing to the severity of this flu season is the specific strains of the virus that are circulating. This year, most flu cases are caused by influenza A strains, which are known for their ability to mutate rapidly and evade the immune system. These strains have historically been linked to more severe flu seasons, often leading to higher hospitalization and death rates. Their widespread circulation is likely a major factor in the increased severity of this year's flu season. The timing of the flu season has also played a role. This year, the flu season peaked later than usual, with cases surging in late January and continuing through February. In contrast, the past three flu seasons peaked in early or late December. A later peak can mean that the virus has more time to spread and infect people, especially if vaccination rates are low and people are not taking precautions like hand washing and avoiding close contact with those who are sick. The extended duration of the flu season has put additional strain on healthcare systems, which are already dealing with the ongoing challenges of COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses. Low natural immunity in the population is another factor that has made this flu season worse. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Measures like mask wearing, social distancing, and reduced travel help to suppress the spread of not only COVID-19, but also other respiratory viruses, including the flu. As a result, people were exposed to fewer viruses, which meant their immune systems had fewer opportunities to build up natural immunity. Now that many of these measures have been relaxed, viruses like the flu are spreading more freely, and people's immune system may be less prepared to fight them off. This lack of natural immunity, combined with low vaccination rates, has created a perfect storm for a severe flu season. Human behavior and societal factors also play a role in the spread of the flu. As people have returned to pre-pandemic activities like traveling, working in offices, and attending school in person, opportunities for the virus to spread have increased. 
The flu is highly contagious and spreads through respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. In crowded settings, the virus can easily jump from person to person, especially if people aren't taking precautions like covering their coughs or washing their hands regularly. The increase in human contact over the past year has likely contributed to the higher rates of flu transmission. Another aspect to consider is the overlap between flu and COVID-19 symptoms. Both illnesses can cause fever, cough, fatigue, and other respiratory symptoms, which can make it difficult to distinguish between the two without testing. Some people may assume they have a mild case of COVID-19 and not realize they have the flu, potentially delaying treatment and increasing the risk of spreading the virus to others. Additionally, the stress on healthcare systems from managing both flu and COVID-19 cases can lead to delays in diagnosis and treatment, which can worsen outcomes for patients. So what can be done to address this severe flu season and prevent future ones? First and foremost, getting vaccinated remains one of the most effective steps individuals can take to protect themselves and others. Even though the flu season is already underway, it's not too late to get a flu shot. Vaccination can still provide protection and reduce the severity of illness if you do get sick. Beyond vaccination, practicing good hygiene is crucial. Regular hand washing, disinfecting frequently touched surfaces, and avoiding close contact with sick people can all help reduce the spread of the flu. Wearing masks in crowded or high-risk settings, such as healthcare facilities, can also provide an additional layer of protection. For those who do get sick, it's important to take steps to avoid spreading the virus to others. This includes staying home from work or school, covering coughs and sneezes, and seeking medical care if symptoms are severe or if you are in a high-risk group. Antiviral medications are available for both flu and COVID-19, but they are most effective when taken early in the course of the illness. If you suspect you have the flu, don't hesitate to contact a healthcare provider to discuss treatment options. Finally, taking care of your overall health can help support your immune system and reduce your risk of getting sick. Eating a balanced diet, getting regular exercise, and prioritizing sleep are all important for maintaining a strong immune system. While these steps won't guarantee that you won't get the flu, they can help your body fight off infections more effectively. But as previously mentioned, the severity of flu season can be attributed to a combination of factors, including low vaccination rates, the circulation of more severe flu strains, a later peak in the season, and reduced natural immunity in the population. While the flu can be a serious illness, there are steps we can all take to protect ourselves and others. By getting vaccinated, practicing good hygiene, and taking care of our health, we can help reduce the impact of the flu and work toward preventing future severe seasons. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. There should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Have a nice day, and thanks for watching.